Welcome back to another lesson in sociology. Today we'll consider key concepts in research. May I remind you that you are following the syllabus Cambridge O Level Sociology 2251. We have completed the major sections on research. Today we'll look at the last part of this lesson and consider a few key concepts. You are aware that in your syllabus there is a list of key concepts which you should cover as part of this chapter on research methodology. Since you have considered most of the concepts, there are only a few left which need some further elaboration and I'm going to consider those few concepts. The concepts that I would wish to address are macro and micro approaches, causation and correlation, objectivity, subjectivity and bias, reliability and validity. However, in this lesson, we're going to consider only the first two, macro and micro approaches and causation and correlation. Macro and micro approaches in sociology. If you're aware of these terms, macro and micro, you should understand that when we speak of macro, we are considering the whole, the system as a whole, whereas micro refers to the individual parts within that whole. When we study society, what do we mean by society and what does society consist of? The sociologist has two main options, either to study society as a whole, look at the institutions within the society, or to look at the individuals who make up that institution. So we have society as a system, a structure consisting of institutions. What are the institutions? You are aware of it already. Family, education, religion, political system, economic system, all these are the institutions that make up the society. They are big, large structures. We are looking at the system as a whole. However, the institutions are made up of individuals. The sociologist therefore has a second option of looking at behavior of people within the institutions. How their behavior affects the working of the institutions. So, when we speak of macro sociology, we are talking about the society as a whole, the society at large. Society is viewed as a system made up of institutions. I told you what those institutions are, family, education, religion, politics, economy, so many other institutions that you study as well as part of your sociology lessons. So therefore we look at the contributions. The word we use very often is the functions of these institutions for society. How do these institutions contribute to the survival of society? This is mostly macro sociology, looking at society as a whole, the institutions of society. What is micro sociology? As the name suggests, the smaller parts, micro. So in micro sociology, we look inside the institutions, people who make up the institutions. And therefore, as we have explained earlier, the interpretive sociologist form part of this micro sociology. They are concerned with discovering the meanings that people attach to their own and others' behavior. They are not concerned with the structure as a whole, but understanding the behavior of people within the structure. And they believe that institutions change because people make an active decision to change. Let us take a simple example. When many people make the decision to live on their own, to lead an independent life, there is a rise in nuclear families. In other words, the institution change. But how did it start? Everything starts with many individuals making a decision to behave in a particular way. 
and that is why if we want to understand society change in society we should also consider what happens within institutions the behavior of people within institutions and this is what micro sociologists are concerned with let us now look at two other concepts which are closely linked causation and correlation when we use the term causation we are trying to find out how we establish the cause of a problem sociologists may use statistical analysis to establish the real cause of a problem i will take two issues that are very often discussed in the public and see what are the causes of these two problems we have identified let us take two examples very often which people talk about sometimes in the media as well can we establish a straightforward causal relationship as illustrated here for instance there is the argument that there is a high rate of divorce petition filed by working women and therefore the cause is assigned to an increase in women taking up employment which is a reason for the high rate of divorce there is another argument that children are neglecting their education and therefore the cause is working parents have no time to care for their children these are very often popular arguments but we should be careful when we come to such conclusions let's look at each one of them separately let us now look more closely at what might be the cause of a rising rate of divorce among working women is it straightforward that women seek divorce because they have started working or are there other more fundamental reasons for the increase of divorce among some working women some studies have found that sometimes people are unhappy within the marriage and it happens that they find a job which helps to reduce dependency on the husband and this is what leads them sometimes to prefer to be on their own and petition for a divorce in this case therefore the real reason for increase in divorce is not the fact that the woman is working it is because the woman was unhappy in a unhappy married relationship and once she is independent and fending for herself she should prefer to end such a unhappy married relationship and therefore the increased rate of divorce petition among working women sometimes is because of unhappiness not necessarily because they are working we should in fact also be aware that among the working women the many of them who live in a happy family of course they are working they are independent and they're living within a happy family and therefore they don't petition for divorce so therefore we should not pick a straight equation between women working and asking for divorce because the real cause is happiness or unhappiness within the family let's look at the other commonly held opinion children are neglecting their education and very often it is assigned to the fact that working parents have no time to care for their children let's look at the facts it is said that working parents have no time to care for their children but the fact shows that children leave their home at 7 a.m. for school and come back home at 4:30 or 5 p.m. after tuition or sometimes some children are at home by 3:30 p.m. say parents also go to work and are back home by 4:30 5 p.m. it is also argued sometimes that mothers are working and children are left on their own but 
let me ask you a few questions. Should the mother stay at home and wait for children while the latter are out? Or should they work in order to improve the standard of living of the family? Can we safely argue that all the children where the mother is at home are taking the education seriously? Obviously no. So we have to be careful. There must be something else that is causing children to neglect the education. And we cannot assign it straight away to the fact that parents are working or the mother is not at home. After looking at the examples, you should now be able to explain what is causation. Causation, in fact, is the establishment of a cause and effect relationship between two variables, often through the use of statistical techniques. Let us now look at the concept correlation. Correlation, other words suggest, co means together, relation means a relationship between two variables. You are aware what we mean by the term variables. Correlation exists when two variables change in either the same direction or in opposite direction at the same time. Same direction means A increases and B also increases. This is a positive correlation. And when it is in the opposite direction means A increases and B decreases. This is called a negative correlation. You will understand this better a little later with a proper example. However, you should also be careful about causation and correlation. For instance, a correlation does not necessarily indicate causation. Means if there are two things which are moving in the same direction or which seem to be changing at the same time, does not necessarily indicate that there is a causal relationship between the two. For instance, an increase in the number of marriages, an increase in the sale of perfume for men might be moving in the same direction, but there is no positive correlation between these two. You can't say that number of marriage is increasing because there is an increase in the sale of perfume for men. Let us now take some concrete examples to illustrate correlation and causation in research. Durkheim established a negative correlation between the degree of integration in society and the suicide rate. What did he mean by degree of integration in society? It he meant that the more a person is integrated in society, in the family, in the community, the less likely it is that he would commit suicide. Therefore, he found a correlation. The higher the degree of integration of an individual in society, the lower the rate of suicide, which was a negative correlation and causation. Degree of integration caused a change in suicide rate. So through establishing a correlation, he was able to find the cause. Another example is that of J.W.B. Douglas, who established a positive correlation between social class and the likelihood to stay on in education beyond the minimum school living age. He found a correlation where the higher the social class, the longer the person stayed on in education beyond the minimum school living age. And therefore the cause of a change in educational attainment was social class. So these are ways in which sociologists have carried out studies and established correlation and causation. 
we have reached the end of this lesson for today. There are a few more concepts which I will consider in the next lesson. So today we looked at the differences between macro and micro sociology and a few key concepts in sociology, namely causation and correlation. I thank you very much for your attention. I would wish to remind you that the pictures in this presentation are from open source upslash.com, freeimages.com and pixels.com. I'll see you soon. Until then, it's goodbye.